So the word of God is a spoken thing. It came out of God's mouth. He said it didn't really come out of God's pen. It came out of God's mouth. Or he said, and the word of God came out of God's mouth. Or it was spoken before it was written. And it was written so it could be spoken. In other words, the word of God works best when it is spoken. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. I'm Mark Hankins, and we're going to talk about the most important words that Jesus ever spoke on the subject of faith. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, in these verses, Jesus himself tells us exactly how faith works. Some have also called this the authority of the believer. That means when you and I as believers exercise our authority, then this is how faith works. So in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, Jesus answering and said unto them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. So Jesus encouraged them, have faith in God. Other translations say, have the faith of God, which would lead us to say, have the God kind of faith. Our other translations say, lay hold on God's faithfulness. In other words, our faith is simply laying hold on God's faithfulness and God's ability and God's power. So when Jesus said to have faith in God, actually the next verse, he makes it so simple you actually need a theologian to get confused about it. Verse 23, Jesus said, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I think it was Smith Wigglesworth in his book, Ever Increasing Faith, that he's pointed out that in Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus said, whosoever, he begins with whosoever and he ends with whatsoever. That means faith works the same in every area of life and it works the same for everybody. He said, anybody can do this, Jesus said, and it will work in every area of your life. It works the same. Whosoever shall have whatsoever means anything is possible. If you can believe, same thing Jesus said in Mark 9 and verse 23, when the guy said, uh, Lord, I'm my son and I'm not getting results and he's still being tormented. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And the man cried, Lord, I believe, help me with my unbelief. Lord, I believe, help me get rid of unbelief. Wow. Well, Jesus here says, here's exactly how faith works. And he said that whosoever shall say, and I learned this from Kenneth E. Hagin or from Dad Hagin. He came to my dad's church when I was eight years old. I didn't really start paying attention until I was 17. And so uh, Dad Hagin pointed this out. It's easy for us to point it out, but he said he was praying. And while he was praying one day, the Lord said to him, did you ever notice in Mark 11:23? that I mentioned the saying part three times and the believing part only once. He said, no, I never noticed that. So he was praying and he just turned in his Bible to Mark eleven twenty three, and he began to count it. Verily I say unto you, that's the first, which is where Jesus is talking. But in reference to the believer, he said, whosoever shall say. So he counted, that's one. Say, unto this mountain be removed, because he shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. And there's one believe right there. Say and believe. And then he says, believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. In other words, he said, well, there's three saith, say, three saith, one believe. So he said, the Lord told him you'll have to do three times more teaching 
on the saying part than you do on the believing part. Our people just won't get it. He said, because in most cases, my children, many cases, they already are believers. He said, but where they're missing it is in what they are saying. He said, you'll have whatsoever you say. Or the way the Lord said it to me one time, he said, if I would have added two words to Mark 11, 23, everybody would be great faith champions. I said, well, what two words? He said, if I would have added in church to the end of Mark 11, 23. I said, why? He said, well, because in church, everybody's praising God in church and everybody's speaking the word in church. He said, but I didn't say you're going to have just what you say in church. He said, you're going to have to watch what you say after church and every day. He said, because your words become determining factors in what you have in your life. Actually, Dad Hagen said this to us when I was just a teenager to my dad's church. He said, if you're not happy with what you have in life, check out what you've been saying. Or you could also say it this way. You could say, if you are silent, you will lose by default. Or you could say it this way, 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. He said, we also believe and therefore speak. In other words, the spirit of faith works by believing and speaking. Believing and speaking. Lord, I believe and I speak. Or even the devil don't care what you believe if you'll be quiet about it. In other words, when you believe God and you believe the word of God, then your saying or your words are what give you authority in this world. Your words spoken, words of faith. When you speak the word of God, it is so powerful that Jesus said, actually, that mountains shall be removed. Mountains. Wow, we're talking about moving a mountain? Well, that sure seems impossible. So I said, Lord, why did you say mountain? Because you had just spoken to the fig tree in the verses right ahead of that. Jesus spoke to the fig tree, no fruit on it. He commanded to be dried up and dried up from the roots. The disciples saw it and they said, Lord, look at the fig tree. Look, it is withered away. Well, all Jesus did was talk to it. Well, then they said, Lord, that's amazing. And Jesus then says, have faith in God. Jesus could have said, I'm Jesus. You're not Jesus. So you can't do that, but I can do that. Or Jesus could have said, that's a deity trick that I learned in heaven. And none of you earthlings, you humans, you cannot do that. But Jesus said, what I just did to the fig tree will work for anybody, anywhere, and it will work on whatsoever. Every area of your life, the authority that you have as a believer, he said it will not only work on a tree, he just cranked it up and he said it will work on a mountain. Wow, well, that sure seems impossible. So many times, having faith in God, the Lord said to me one time, he said, never remove God from your faith formula. What does that mean? Steps of faith. In other words, there are exact steps of faith and how faith works. But your faith is in God. So the Lord said to me, he said, even if you know how faith works, does not mean you know how God's going to do your miracle. Just because you know how faith works, you can see the steps of faith, but you still don't know how God's going to do that because that's God's business. So my believing and my speaking opens the door to God. And I say to the mountain, be removed. When I believe and speak, I open the door of the supernatural and I say, Mr. Mountain, I would like to introduce you to the almighty God. My faith is in God. That means I'm the believer and God is the performer. He will bring it to pass. He is able. It's his strength, his ability, his power. But my faith is in God. My expectation is in God. So to have faith in God, how does that work? Jesus said, whosoever shall say. Now remember, here's what Dad Higgins said. He said the saying part is in there three times and the believing part is only in there once. Listen close. Because Dad Hagen said, 
But Lord, I've read the New Testament through 150 times, and I never noticed that in Mark 11, 23, the saying part was in there three times and the believing part only once. Think about that. Dad Hagen read the New Testament through 150 times, and he never saw that. Jesus actually had to point it out to him. Once he saw it, of course, all of us can say, well, I can see that clearly. But he never saw it. Jesus pointed it out to him, and the Lord told him, you'll have to do three times more teaching on the saying part than you do on the believing part. Our people won't get it. Or you could say the power of your words, what you say, or if you're silent, you will lose by default, or faith works by speaking, by speaking, or you could say the initial act of faith. In other words, faith requires corresponding action, or the word believe is a verb. It means action. So that means this, the first act of faith, the initial act of faith is faith must move your mouth. If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it will never move a mountain. In other words, don't be intimidated by the size of the problem or the size of the mountain and say, oh, that seems too big. How could that ever change? But your faith is in God. So as the believer, you speak to the mountain. Uh, he didn't tell you to climb it. He didn't tell you to talk about it. He said to talk to it. Your words give you authority, which means that no longer do you have the whine of a victim in your voice. Now you have authority of a believer or you have victory in your voice. Or you could say, as it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Or the moment you step into the arena of faith, and the moment you exercise your faith, this is the victory, or this is the victory in life. It comes from faith, faith in God, faith in the Word of God, faith in the blood of Jesus, faith in the name of Jesus, faith in the power of God and the indwelling Holy Spirit. To have faith in God means your faith must speak, or it must say. Your faith must have a voice. Actually, the way the Lord said it to me many years ago, he said, the word of God in your mouth. He says, the word in your mouth. He said, it's in your mouth. It's near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. That's how you got saved, by confessing Jesus as your Lord. Believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead, and that's the confession of faith that caused you to be born again and to receive salvation. Jesus is Lord. And when you declare that, then salvation, the greatest miracle happened in your heart and you were born again, recreated. Jesus is my Lord. How did that happen? He said, the word is near you. It's in your mouth. Or you could say salvation is in your mouth. Or you could say deliverance is in your mouth. Or you could say healing is in your mouth. Or you could say victory is in your mouth. Or you could say prosperity is in your mouth. Your words become determining factors that you'll have what you say. So here's what Jesus had to say about it. Whosoever shall have whatsoever the word of God, which is faith food, or you could say it this way. Um, <clears throat> the Lord said it this way to me. He said, the word of God is a spoken thing that it came out of God's mouth that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the word of God is a spoken thing. It came out of God's mouth. He said it didn't really come out of God's pen. It came out of God's mouth. Or he said, and the word of God came out of God's mouth. Or it was spoken before it was written. And it was written so it could be spoken. In other words, the word of God works best when it is spoken. That when a believer takes that word and speaks, or you could say it this way in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And then you see in Genesis 1, God said, God said, 
God said, and it says, and God saw, and God saw, and God saw. So the Lord said to me, sound came before sight. Sound came before sight, he said, and then he saw. And he said, many people want a change of scenery. He said, but to get a change of scenery, you have to have a change of sound. In other words, words of faith that are spoken. Go back to Mark eleven twenty three 23 real quickly here, and we're going to see what Jesus had to say about faith. Do you think Jesus might be an expert, right? Wow, he's exactly the best teacher that there is. When it comes to faith, Jesus said, whosoever shall say, he shall have whatsoever he saith. We call this the say of the speaking part of faith. Now, if you look at the book of James, chapter 3 and verse 2, 3, 4, all of those verses, James said, your tongue is a tiny member. It's the smallest among your whole body, your tiny member. And he says, and your tongue is a tiny member. And he says, and yet it boasts tremendous effects and has tremendous influence. The tongue, he said, has the greatest influence of all the members of your body and of your life. He says, your tongue. Oh, wow, what's happening? He says, the tongue determines your direction, your destination, regardless of the wind, regardless of the waves, regardless of circumstances. He said, what you say in your tongue will determine your direction, regardless of adversity, your tongue. So sometimes people say, well, I know faith requires speaking, but how significant is that? Well, James 3 verse 2 says, your tongue. I was listening to uh, Pastor Youngie Cho many years ago. Actually, it was 1970 something, and he was teaching on faith and the power of your words. And and uh, one of the greatest churches, largest churches in the world in Seoul, Korea, Pastor Cho, and love his influence and his teaching. And so, Pastor Cho, he said he was eating with a leading neurosurgeon in Seoul, Korea, many years ago. I was eating with a leading neurosurgeon in Seoul, Korea. Pastor Cho said, he said, and the leading neurosurgeon said, we have a new discovery in the study of the brain, in the study of the brain. And that is that the speech center in the brain exercises dominion over the whole central nervous system. He said, so when we're doing surgery on somebody's brain, if you probe different parts of the brain, different parts of the body respond. He said, but if you probe the speech center, the whole central nervous system responds. He said, we have realized the influence of the speaking and the speech center. He said that the speech center in the brain exercised dominion over the whole body. He said so much so that when someone's going into surgery, we actually watch and listen to what they are saying. If they're saying, I'm so afraid. I'm afraid I'll not survive or I'm going to die. He said, then we get them to change the way they're speaking because it will affect the success of the surgery. He said, if someone says, I'm so weak, he said, that speech center sends a message out to the whole body to prepare to be weak. I thought, well, that's interesting because the scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. I'm strong in the Lord. He said, and if the and people say, I'm getting so old. He said, the speech center sends a message to the whole body to prepare to die. In other words, he said, the speech center exercised dominion over the whole central nervous system. Pastor Cho said, oh, I know this long time. And the neurosurgeon said, how do you know long time? And Pastor Cho says, from Dr. James. And the neurosurgeon said, who is Dr. James? And Pastor Cho says, Dr. James, New Testament. The tongue, tiny member, controls the whole body. In other words, medical science says, we have a new discovery. But for 2,000 years, God has said, your tongue exercises authority over your body. But think about that, your health. I remember Dad Hagen used to say this. People say, how are you doing? He said, I feel great. I feel fine. Now, body, get in line. Huh, amazing. Well, his words affecting his own health. And so then you can see the power of your words when he said, say to the mountain, be removed. That means this, that mountain has to obey 
the authority of words. So the Lord said to me one time, the reason words will move mountains is because mountains are made out of words. In other words, everything's made out of words. So the authority of the believer means the spoken word of God. So that when you get up in the morning, if you dare to speak the word of God, it begins to change your world. The scenery, mountains have to move. What does that mean it's going to move? He said, it'll go into the sea, which means it'll never come back. Next, he said, and there'll be no evidence it was ever there. And there's things you're facing right now in your mind, in your life, in your family, in your finances that seem like they're permanent and they'll never change. But when you take the word of God and put it in your mouth, the scenery will change and things will move and mountains will move and there'll be no evidence you ever had that problem. Even a year from now, people say, wow, you've never had a problem like that. You'll say, ah, well, let me tell you, well, months ago, years ago, I had that same situation, looked impossible, but I have faith in God. When you have faith in God and you feed your faith on the word of God and you take that word, God's word, and put it in your mouth and begin to speak, then that gives you the authority that literally God himself, his ability, his power is released by words of faith. So I encourage you, to exercise your authority. Jesus is talking to you. You are a whosoever and you can have whatsoever. So I dare you, double dog dare you, to take the word, believe God, speak the word of God, and you'll find dreams will come to pass and mountains will move and you'll stand in a place of victory. The message of the spirit of faith. The message of the spirit of faith. Uh, it just, that message just leaped on the inside of me in my spirit. And that message of the spirit of faith was the connector, if you will, uh, to Mark Hankins Ministries uh, with the intent of walking in that same spirit of faith that pastors Mark and Trina Hankins walk in. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith opens the door to the supernatural, enables you to receive from God and fulfill your divine destiny. God is a faith God and without faith, it is impossible to please him. In the Spirit of Faith book, Mark Hankins shares valuable truths, such as how to win the war of words, Faith is an act. The simplest definition of faith is acting like the Bible is true. Never run to your giant with your mouth shut. The spirit of faith is a pioneer spirit. It enables you to advance, break barriers, and go into new territory. When you order this book, you will also get Faith 2020. In this four CD set, you will learn the importance of exceedingly growing faith. Faith is the victory, the good fight of faith, and cure for unbelief. If you're silent in 2020, you will lose by default. So lift your voice and say something. When you order this special faith package, your gift of $25 or more will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train pastors around the world. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Then when Jesus said, whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And in Trina, in your life, when the doctor diagnosed you with a brain tumor that he said is inoperable, we said, yeah, but Jesus said that this tumor, I spoke to it, you must be removed. Cast into the sea means that you're not coming back. And he says, also, there'll be no evidence it was ever there. In other words, the authority of the believer, when we live by faith, that no longer can we be a victim in life, but we have victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So I encourage you to get this book on the spirit of faith and also get the messages on faith, overcoming faith, mountain moving faith. This is the victory. And it's the faith of God 
It's we the live God by the of faith yeah. of the Son of God who loved us and gave us for, yeah. gave Himself for us. And so when we put that word in our mouth, it's like you said, mouth to mouth resuscitation. Yeah. And we overcome not with just who I am or having a positive attitude. Yeah. That's good. But to have the word of God in our mm, mouth, if yeah. the word is God breathed, mm -hmm. he breathed it into us and then we speak it out mm -hmm. and it changes our world. Just like he created the world with his words, we create our, word, our world mm -hmm. with our words. So yeah. the spirit of faith is so powerful. You know, I like to take this book and it, the, every chapter is like a daily devotional. Yeah. You can take it, it's just the right size, just along. long, mm -hmm. uh, you can read one a day and overcome. Take that scripture, learn it, memorize it, put it in your mouth, mm -hmm. take some of those phrases and then teach it to somebody else because when you share it with someone else, you get it better and then they pass it, you pass yeah. your faith to somebody. Yeah, you have an attitude of faith. An attitude. And you have words of faith. And when you lift up your voice, the Lord said to me, your voice is your address yes. in the realm of the spirit. So when you lift your voice up and speak the word of God or bring your mouth, your words into agreement with the word of God, right. calling things that be not as right. though they were. I like to say God has a reputation for telling people things. There's no evidence that exists. Mm -hmm. God will call you things. There's no evidence that exists. He told Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. And Gideon was anything but a mighty man of valor, living in a hole, defeated in every area of his life. But the moment he believed God and agreed with God, he became a mighty champion. He said the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And Gideon. He put his name in there with God. <laughs> and Gideon's <laughs> turn around changed the whole nation. Yes. In other words, God will call you things. There's no evidence it exists, but the word. And as long as you have the word and you agree with God and hold fast to that confession that you are who God says you are and you have what he says you have. Oh, and I tell you, mountains have to move. The scenery has they to do. change. Yes. And I tell you this, God has some great things for you. And the Lord said to me, if you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would you move, move it. it. <laughs> In other words, move God's Move plan it. for us, and sometimes the devil throws big hindrances or mountains in the middle, but those mountains have to move. And when we exercise our faith and live by faith, and we actually have the faith of the Son of yes. God. Yes, yes. Amen. The God kind of faith. And we have faith in God, faith in the blood of Jesus, faith in the Word of God. Faith in the power of God. Faith in the indwelling Holy Spirit. Mm. Faith in the name of Jesus. We live by faith. So I encourage you to get this book on the spirit of faith and get the messages and they'll just light your candle, light your faith, and you'll run through a troop, jump over a wall and fulfill the plan and purpose of God for your life. And we thank you for being a monthly partner with us. Thank you so we much. thank you because the word, the mm -hmm. spirit of faith is going to leaders in nation after nation around the world. And so until next time, we Mark and Trina Hankins, and we love you, God bless you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For